Hey guys, this is Mr. Mitchell. Uh, today we're going to be talking about exploring gravitational potential energy. So we, we kind of have a basic idea of what it is. We're going to spend some, spend some time today being specific about it and actually how we can calculate how much GPE an object will have. Before we get into that, I want to revisit this idea of work really quickly because it's going to be foundational for how we explore and figure out the equation for GPE. So um, if we recall correctly, work is simply the change in energy. We defined it qualitatively as a change in energy. We also defined it quantitatively by saying that we can calculate how much work is done by multiplying the force that's applied times the distance over which that force gets applied. So what we didn't link to uh, in the past is that forces are really the cause of all energy transfers and the cause of work being done. So uh, in order for an energy transfer to occur, I have to have a force pushing you know, that energy from one object to another. Uh, and therefore, for work, the force has to be applied over a distance. So I need to have a force in order for work to be done. So what about GPE? What is the force that's involved in the energy transformation that gives an object GPE. So I have, you know, little Johnny over here. He stumbles across a big bag of money, and he's very excited about that. And so what he does is he wants to lift that money up to carry it with him. So he does all this work. It's really heavy. He kind of crunches down a little bit here, and he's trying to lift this bag of money, and it's very, very heavy. So what he's done by lifting the object is given it some GPE because now it's up in the air, right? He's got it up in the air, and so we say that anytime an object's in the air, it has GPE. Well, what was the force that's involved in giving that bag of money that GPE? Because he had to apply a force to pick it up, correct? What I would argue is that the force that he applies to lift the bag is equal to the weight of the bag itself, all right? So the force that he had to apply to lift this huge bag of money is the same as the weight of that bag. <clears throat> so when we think about this idea of weight, right, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about weight versus mass a little bit more in the chemistry unit. But for now, we're going to say that weight is simply a measure of the force of gravity pulling on an object's mass. So the weight of an object is gravity pulling that object down towards the ground. Mass is a little bit different. It's just measuring how many particles are present in an object. And so it's just an amount of something. It's not an actual force at all. So weight is actually a force. Mass is not. And we'll deal more with mass a little bit later, like I said, in chemistry. But for now, we're focusing on the fact that weight is a force. If we were to try and calculate weight, so we want to figure out what that force is going to be. Um, this is going to be important later once we get into defining GPE. If we want to calculate the weight, we want to find out what the force of gravity of the, is on that object. So what we do is we take the mass of the object that we talked about before, how many particles there are, and we multiply it by this constant that's called a gravity value. We call it little g. <clears throat> and so on Earth, little g is always going to be 9.8 meters per second. This could change, you know, if you go to another planet, you go to the moon, uh, the gravity value will change. But for most of the problems we're going to do, we're going to stick with this 9.8. So when I calculate the weight of an object, the weight is simply going to be the mass of the object, times that gravity value, and for the most part, that's gonna be 9.8 for us. So uh, in simpler terms, here is the equation we would use, W equals M times G. So let's go ahead and apply that to a problem. Example problem, really easy one. How much does a heavy bank safe that has a mass of 450 kilograms weigh on Earth? If you don't remember, this is our box organizer we're gonna use for every single physics problem we ever do. So in this, we are writing down our givens do not forget to put these in there, or you will not get credit for these problems. So the first given uh, is really that the mass is 450 kilograms. It's actually the only given that's explicitly written in the problem, right? The second one that we need to remember is that that little g value is equal to 9.8. This isn't always going to be explicitly given to you, so you got to be careful to make sure that you write it. And it's meters per second squared are the units for that. In this box, we want to write our equation. And so our equation here is going to be, remember that the weight of an object equals the mass of the object times that little g value or the, the gravity value. So down here is our work and solution. 
So remember, we rewrite the equation first. Weight equals mass times gravity value, and now we're going to replace those terms. The mass is 450 kilograms. The gravity value is 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we multiply that out, we get 4,410. And then it's kilograms times meters per second squared. And remember how I said um, meters per second squared. Remember how I said scientists sometimes make up funny, funny terms? Well, uh, this is actually, since it's a weight and weight's a force, remember that forces are measured in newtons. So we can just say, instead of kilograms per, times meters per second squared, we'll say 4,410 newtons is the weight. And so down here we would write our full sentence that says, the safe weighs... 4,410 newtons. <clears throat> and we're done. So weight problems are very straightforward. They're really simple. Mass times gravity. Once we start getting into GPE, we're going to have to take it a bit further. So follow along closely because this is a step-by-step -step process that we got to kind of pick up on point A before we can move to point B. If we remember, kind of, we talked about this in the beginning, we talked about this before, work is the same as the change in energy. So when we give an object GPE, we do work on it to lift it up in the air, right, and to change its energy. So for that reason, what we can argue then is that work is simply going to be equal to the amount of GPE that the object has because work is the same as the change in energy and we're changing it by just giving it GPE and lifting it into the air, okay? So work and GPE are going to be equal for right now. So if work equals GPE... Let's think about how much work is done to actually lift an object and give it that GPE. Well, the work equation that we've used in the past is just that work is force times distance. Well, remember what we said when we're lifting an object up into the air? What's the force that we apply? The force is the same as the weight. So what we'll do here, instead of writing work is force times distance, since we're talking about just lifting an object straight up into the air, we can say instead that work is going to be the weight times the distance because that's the same as the force, right? The weight and the force are the same thing. So work now, our definition or our equation is going to be work is weight times distance. Well, now we're going to substitute again. See, this is a little bit complicated. So weight, we just finished calculating, that's equal to an object's mass times the objects or the gravity value. So in our work equation, what we're going to do now is replace the weight term the weight term, we're going to replace that with this mass times gravity value. So I have work equals the weight which is the mass times the gravity value, multiplied by the distance, just like we have up here, the distance. So, just to recap that really quickly, we're now at the point where our equation says work is mass times gravity value times distance. So we're multiplying three numbers now. The last link we're going to make now is going all the way back to what we said in the beginning. Work and GPE are going to be the same right? Because we're just lifting the object into the air. So when we do the work on it, we're giving it that GPE. If work and GPE are the same, then we can just kind of flip that equation and say, well, if work is mass times gravity value times distance, then GPE is mass times gravity value times distance. So that's what we do here. Work, GPE is equal to the mass times the gravity value times the distance. Well, anytime I'm talking about GPE, that distance I'm talking about is a height up into the air, correct? because GPE is how much energy it has because of its height. So instead of calling this a distance now, we're just going to replace it with the term height because anytime we're talking about GPE, it's always talking about a distance that's vertical or up into the air. So our last equation here is that GPE equals mass times gravity value times height. And the real important one that you want to remember, okay, is GPE equals MGH. That's kind of the shorthand way to write it. This is the big equation we're going to use from now on to calculate actually how much GPE an object has instead of just talking about the fact that it has GPE because it's in the air. So now that we have an equation, let's go ahead and practice with this one and then we'll be finished. 
So the Wi-Fi on Corey's iPad is not working. He lifts the iPad 1.5 meters into the air, pretending he's going to smash it on the ground. Pretending he's going to smash it on the ground. If the iPad has a mass of 1.25 kilograms, how much GPE does it have? So we always want to identify our question, how much GPE does it have? So that's what we're working towards. Remember, we always put our givens into the box up here. So our first given is he lifts it 1.5 meters into the air. That's a distance. So distance equals 1.5 meters. Pretend he's going to smash it on the ground. If the iPad has a mass of 1.25 kilograms, mass equals 1.25 kilograms, how much GPE does it have? The one thing that we're missing in here is that G value. Remember, it's not always going to be explicitly given to you. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. Over here, we're going to write our equation. And remember, we're solving for GPE here, so remember the equation that we just wrote was GPE equals mass times gravity value times height. Our work and solution goes in this box. So we are going to rewrite our GPE equation. GPE equals mass times gravity value times height. The mass is 1.25 kilograms, comes from up here. The gravity value is 9.8 meters per second squared. And our height, or the distance, is 1.5 meters. So we go ahead and we multiply all three of those, and we get 18.38. Now remember, this is GPE, so anytime we're measuring energy, we know that the units are joules. I'm not even going to go through what all this junk is when we multiply those together. We're just going to focus on the fact that GPE is going to be measured in joules and not even worry about it for now. Okay? So we just figured out how much it has. The last step is to answer the question. So Corey's iPad has 18.8. 38 joules of gravitational potential energy. So that's how we go about calculating GPE. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing uh, in terms of how do we get to that point. It's just the relationship between work and energy that we know they're the same. Um, so don't get hung up too much on if you didn't quite understand step by step the process how we got there. As long as you recognize that work and GPE are going to be the same, uh, the steps in between aren't that big a deal. As long as we know that we can calculate it using this equation, GPE equals mass times gravity value times height.